Life Kids, I'm so glad you're back to learn more about God's kingdom. This week, we're going to hear about some more parables, and I'm so ready. I've got my stack of books here with all kinds of short stories. That's what a parable is, right? A short story? Ooh, you're right. We learned about that last week. Parables are short stories, but not like storybooks like <laughs> Truck Full of Ducks. Jesus told short stories to tell people important things about the kingdom of God and how to follow his teachings. And today we're going to look at three more of Jesus' parables. These ones all have a common theme. Can you guess what they are? Kids, I can't find it anywhere. I've been looking for over an hour. I'm pretty sure it's lost forever. I've looked in the closet. I've looked in the couch. I've looked in the oven. I even looked in the toilet. It's nowhere to be found. What am I looking for, you ask? My other shoe. See? Shoe? No shoe. This is an emergency. My leg is no good if I don't have a shoe at the end of it. I've got an important kickball game in 30 minutes and I can't play without my other shoe. The only other shoes I have are flip flops. And the last time I wore those when I kicked the ball, my shoe went sailing through the air and the pitcher caught it with his face. I almost got banned from the league. One more mistake and I'm out. My bed. I haven't checked under my bed. Hold on. Oh, 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 it's so close. Oh, oh, I can almost reach it. Oh, ah! I got it. Uh, and I also found some of these moldy carrots in there. Who do? Well, I got ahead of my game. See you guys later. Bye. Well, I'm glad Workout Wendy finally found her shoe. It can be frustrating when you can't find what you're looking for, but it also might help if she cleaned her room up from time to time. Anyways, speaking of things that are lost, in Luke 15, Jesus told three parables about things that were lost. Any guesses what those might be? Let's watch our Bible story video to find out. Tax collectors and sinners came to listen to Jesus teach. The religious leaders complained because Jesus welcomed sinners. So Jesus told them three parables to teach them about God. Jesus said, if a man has 100 sheep and loses one, what does he do? He leaves the 99 sheep and searches for the lost sheep until he finds it. Then he tells his friends and neighbors, let's celebrate, I found my lost sheep. In heaven, there is more joy when one sinner repents and turns back to God than for 99 people who did not wander off. Jesus also said, if a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one of them, what does she do? She lights a lamp, sweeps the house and searches carefully until she finds it. Then she tells her friends and neighbors, let's celebrate, I found my lost coin. Then Jesus repeated, in heaven, there is joy when one sitter repents and turns back to God. Jesus told a third story. A man had two sons. The younger son said, father, give me my inheritance today. So the father gave his son his share. The younger son left home. He wasted his money and lived foolishly. There was a famine and the people in that country did not have enough food. Hmm? Oh. 
The son got a job feeding pigs. He was so hungry, even the pigs' food looked tasty. The younger son made a plan. He would go back to his father and admit he was wrong. He would ask to work for his father like the servants. So the younger son headed home. He was still a long way away when his father saw him coming. His father ran to him, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son began to apologize. I have sinned against God and against you, he said. But the father told his servants, Let's celebrate with a feast. Bring the best robe and put it on my son. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. This son of mine was lost, and now he is found. At this time, the older son came from the fields and heard music at the house. What's going on? He asked one of the servants. Your brother is here, the servant said. Your father is celebrating. The older brother was angry. He refused to go to the feast. The father asked him to come inside. The older brother said, I never disobeyed you, but you never threw a party for me. Son, the father said, everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate. Your brother was lost, but now he is found. Jesus told stories about people who were looking for things that were lost. Jesus told these stories to teach about himself. Jesus looks for people who are lost, people who do not know him. Jesus gave his life to save people from sin. Well, there you have it. Three things that were lost. First, a shepherd had 100 sheep. When one went missing, he left the 99 to find the missing one. And when he found it, he celebrated. In the same way, a woman whose coin was lost searched her house until she found it. She invited her neighbors to come celebrate with her. And lastly, the younger son was lost. And when he finally returned home, what did they do? They celebrated. Jesus told these stories to teach us what God is like. God cares about people. He won't ignore or give up on one lost person. He wants everyone to be a part of his family because Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Adrian from Paris, Tennessee asks, A kid at school who is mean to others just started coming to my church. What should my friends and I do when we see him at church? Adrian, I think the first thing we need to recognize, it's great when anybody comes to church. It really is a sign that God is at work in their heart and they have a chance to hear the gospel and see other people like you who love Jesus and can experience what it means to have a relationship with him. So when I think about this kid at school being mean to others, I have to go two different directions. Either this kid is a believer who is not acting out the way he should, uh, that he's not letting the gospel take root in his heart so that he's loving other people, and that's a problem. Or this kid is not a believer at all, and he needs Jesus Christ. He needs to hear the gospel, trust in Jesus, and let Jesus change him so that he loves other people. And either way, what's the best thing for him? The best thing is for him to be around kids like you who love Jesus and love him. And so when this kid comes to church, I think you want to really love this person well. Welcome him, show him forgiveness, show him love and grace and mercy so that he can see that God makes a difference in the hearts and lives of those who love Jesus. And so you're modeling this to him either way. Either he needs, as a believer, needs to repent of his sin, of being mean to others, and walk with Christ again rightly, or trust in Jesus for the first time. I think it's exciting that you and your friends have the chance to be Jesus in front of this kid so he can follow Jesus too. So here's a question back for you. How can the way you treat someone show that person the truth about Jesus?
All right, you guys, it's memory verse time. And who doesn't like a good cheesy, right? So here's how today's game is gonna work. My hands are gonna go behind my back. I'm gonna use just my mouth, okay? 10 seconds on the timer, however many I get out in 10 seconds is how many words I get to take out of the verse while we read it together. Got it? Here we go, 10 seconds. Oh, I don't back in. Oh, all right. One, two, three, four, five. That is some salty goodness. Five words coming out of our verse. Let's read it together. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. All right. I might need some water by the end of this, but let's go for round two. That's four, two. Let's go for round two. 10 seconds. Oh, better move those. One, two, three, four. Oh, so close. Number four went back in the container. So three, three more words coming out of the verse. Let's read it. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves and whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. All right. I have one more round before I'm going to need to go get a glass of water. All right. Do I have anything on my face? I feel like my nose is covered. All right. Cheer me on. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six. Oh, mm. wish I could share these with you guys. Six, the last round, six more words coming out. Let's read it together. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us in the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1, 13 to 14. All right, I'm gonna go get some water. You guys grab your Bible, meet me back here. We're gonna open it up to Luke chapter 19, verse 10. It's a race, let's go. Now that you've got your Bibles, let's open them up to Luke chapter 19. We're going to read verse 10 together. It says, The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Sometimes lost sheep don't even realize they're lost. Jesus is the good shepherd who goes after the lost sheep and brings them home. The Bible says that God wants everyone to be saved. And when a person repents or turns to God turns to Jesus, you know what we should do? Celebrate. So let's sing together and celebrate Jesus who's come to seek and save us who were lost.
like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that. Jesus, we're lost and in darkness. But many people in our world are lost and they don't even know it. They may not be physically lost, but they're spiritually lost. They don't know Jesus. And Jesus said that believers or people who know who Jesus is, we're like lights in a dark world. You can help people who are spiritually lost by telling them about Jesus. So why did Jesus come? Jesus came to seek and save the lost, and everyone who trusts in Jesus' forgiveness has eternal life. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending Jesus to rescue us from our sin. Help us be lights in a dark world full of people who do not know and love you. Give us boldness to tell others the good news about Jesus. Amen.